This podcast discusses video games, modern culture, and technology, and these podcasters are big fat potty mouths. If you're younger than 18 or are easily offended, please stop this podcast now. Oh, and your mom says to take out the trash and do your homework. Are the mics hot? The mics are hot. <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is. Welcome to the Game Hounds. I'm Edie Sellers, and with me is Holly Gully and Nick DiNicola. Gully is eating Fritos, and Nick is being an ass. <laughs> what else is new? <laughs> So if I sound a little weird, if it sounds a little like um, echoey for me, I don't know how much echo you're getting. We had our rugs pulled up and they are out being laundered. So I have a house completely made of hardwood floors at the moment. So anybody who knows sound will know that that means that it gets loud. <laughs> it gets loud. The last time I, I was dating a girl many years ago and she said she had her rugs pulled up. That meant she, um, <laughs> never mind, never mind. Let's just move on with the show. <laughs> yeah, my, the the carpet in here was freaking filthy. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick, you are not being distracted by the World Cup. Let's just get this out of the way early. Oh. That America match. What a freaking heartbreaker. I walked into the other room. I walked into the other room for the last 30 seconds of the game. Because I was so hungry that I wanted, to, I needed to get some food. And I walked into the other room, came back, and I'm like, why is everyone celebrating? You know, why is, what's going on? What? And then it was like, Bleep! and the game is over and the score is tied. It's like, ah. Yep. ah. That was, that yeah, was it, was like, it was like, goal, okay, game over. <laughs> game over. It's like they were just waiting for them to get. And you know what was the funniest thing about that match? It was that nobody was happy. On that pitch. <laughs> Americans were pissed. And the Portuguese were totally pissed. You could tell. It's like you scored the tying. You kept your, your team alive. By literally the last second of the game. And you're pissed. <laughs> I think they were more pissed than the Americans were. <laughs> they probably expected to win. Exactly. It, says, it shows a lot of the hubris about, you know, like. We have the World's Cup. We have Ronaldo. It's like, well, yeah. Uh, and that whole that uh, it, I can't watch that. <laughs> it, it, literally, I I get caught up in it like anything else. When there's something big on, I get caught up in it. So I watch it, and literally. Oh, four <laughs> seconds in, and we already have. Like, oh, yeah, four seconds in, and guys are look, looking for penalties on the ground. All right. So she, yeah, yeah that's part of the game. The that's part I of the saw, game. I, I let I let my dog out the other day. She ran out in the backyard, and, and she was so excited to be outside. She started rolling around on her back like dogs do. I was like, oh, a soccer game just broke up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like unbelievable. Goal! Oh. <laughs> it, 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 I'm sorry. If, to be the top quote top professional soccer people in the world right you're rolling around like you a do realize that is part of the game that is and, part of the and, strategy and, well, of the game right and that's drawing penalties right. and earning yourself time earning your teammates time when they're tired yeah and but what i'm saying is and, and that's why that it gets a bad rap in a lot of groups i'm not saying it's not popular but i'm saying that there's there's a lot of hate yeah. Cut that. Yeah. Well, and I can understand I, that. Facebook feed was blowing up with nothing but you divers, you pussies. How do you call yourself? Athletes. Hey, if that's part of the game, that's great. But it's like, where's the sniper? Where's the sniper that, that just shot you? Someone must have shot you because you went down pretty hard. You know, and, and I'm sorry. I know they're in condition because they can run miles and they're all hot and sweaty. It's 100 degrees. But damn, when you just fall on the ground and pretend you're hurt. I'm sorry. As a hockey player, and I've seen guys play through a lot of sure. shit. Sure. It doesn't fly. It well, doesn't if fly. hockey. What's, what's particularly hilarious about watching people dive is that when they show the slow mo replays, you can tell the moment someone starts to fall, they throw their hands out, like to really emphasize, like, look at me. I'm falling. I'm falling. Look at me. I'm, I'm falling. falling. Look at me. Check look me out. Me. I'm falling. <laughs> it's 
hilarious. Well, it would be hockey would be a lot more like that if the hockey clock clock app didn't ever stop. If it was a set time, the clock starts and it does not stop ever. Well, that's the other thing is you don't even know how much time is left. It's like they have this clock going. It's like it hits the ninety minutes or forty five minutes, and it just keeps on going. Well, yeah, because they <laughs> add they they add a few minutes. They add to add time to the end of the game. Yeah, but you don't know. five minutes or whatever. It's, it's like, well, it's you like, will know close to the end of the game. But that's the thing is you don't know. You, you don't. don't know you've, got to to the you've got to play to the ninety minutes. You've got to play to the ninety minutes. We're in injury time, and now we're in you know because my fake injury time, and it's like you, it just. How much time? I want to know. I need to know these things. I need to know. <laughs> well, that's also I, 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 I kind of like how they handle the time. I like that they don't stop the clock all the time. But that extra time, it is kind of iffy because, you know, FIFA is known to be corrupt. And there's always right. these conspiracies exactly. and these controversies about, uh, you know, games bought. And it's so easy to just, like, add 30 seconds of time Mm -hmm. or add a minute onto the clock just like okay come on guys i'm adding this time for you to win (laughs) uh so i i admit there could be a lot more transparency and like why are they adding four minutes instead of three minutes all right well that's part of what it is i i really do enjoy the world cup I enjoy I the I math do. of it. I, I really enjoy the math of it because really the strategy is not so much on the pitch that I'm, I'm interested in. Although that's interesting. The the math is where I really start to get off what on it. The math? Um, draws being one point, wins being three points. Okay, if I okay. draw on this game, I'm not eliminated, but I have to play the next game and beat somebody in the next game or at least draw because it's all based on points. So it becomes... And it's, you know, within your group. And your group is different than somebody else's group. Yeah, that's when it gets kind of fun for me. <clears throat> okay, so then you know about the math. Yeah. Then, okay, tell me this. So, United States has four points now. Yeah. If you win, you get three. If you tie, you get one. If you lose, you get none. Right. If we would have... We're, like, at the head of our group. Um, tied with Germany. People- yeah, the two people below us have one point each, and they're going to play the game next. Right. If one of them wins, they get three points, which gives them four. Right. If we lose against Germany, we get none, so we have four. Right. So what happens when after, like, the three games that you're supposed to play in this bracket, you're still tied? Then they – I believe they look at points sc- – goals scored during the games and who sc- who you scored the goals against. So if – Uh, there were more goals scored overall by, say, Portugal. Like, say that they won all of their, they they lost their game five to four, and we won our game two to one, then they would actually be ahead of us in that kind of, I want to call wild card-ish thing. Okay. Yeah. And then I think they also look at who you scored your goals against. Like, how many goals did you score against the United States? Or how many goals did you score against that guy? I'm not exactly sure about those parts of it. I you, I know it every year and uh, every four years, and then I I promptly forget it and boot it out <laughs> of my hard drive and make rooms for other stuff, and then I have to relearn it. But yeah, I think they look at, at the amount of total goals you've scored in, during the brackets. Yeah. So, yeah, I really freaking love. I love World Cup. I'm glad you I like love it. World Cup. I love World Cup because I, we're underdog. Because we're good, but we're underdogs. Yeah, I know. I just wish there wasn't all this. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay. Last bit of World Cup, and then we'll move on to video games. But um, there was a you you saw that there was a uh, um, graph that was made by the German Water Authority, the guys that run all the drinking water throughout Germany, and they actually tracked the um, water pressure in the pipes um, during the World Cup match of Germany versus Portugal and watched the water pressure, you know, the water use, because water pressure can convert to water. If you use water, there's lower pressure in the pipes. And they actually looked at it and saw that at the beginning of the game, there was this spike of people flushing their toilets and then during the game it went down to like nothing and it went down and down and down and mm-hmm. down and then halftime and then it was this massive spike like all the way 
up to the stratosphere. And then game starts again and down it goes. Down and down and down and down. End of the game spikes back up. So everybody flushed their toilet in Germany all at the same time. Pretty much in in the same 10 minute interval. (laughs) There's also a a cool chart for England looking at uh, the population of the Titanfall servers. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And when there was a match, like, the Titanfall servers kind of dropped. <laughs> and then during halftime, you could see it spike a little bit. And then it drops again when the match comes on. And then, like, towards the end of the match, when uh, England is, like, a point behind and it's kind of clear they're going to lose, you can see it start to go up a little bit. And then when the game ends, it just flies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It even affects the game. Can I have my Fritos now? You can have a Frito. I've eaten a burger on the show because I had to. All right. So video games. You know those things. I'm All still right, playing so Final Fantasy. and Video games. But you dragged me into uh, Watch Dogs multiplayer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We played some of that. Yeah. What do you think? Nick loves it. Yeah. What do you, what do, you do? Together, is it together or against people? What it's, can, it's, it's well, it's kind of both. Yeah. Um, the mode, the multiplayer mode, is just kind of fun. It's kind of like capture the flag, but you're not taking it to any base. Uh, basically, there's this, I don't know, there's a flag uh, on the map, and you have to run and grab it. And if you get near it, it's like you start to hack it. And if you stay next to it for like five seconds, you'll steal it. Or if you just run up to it, you'll automatically take it. But what that means is that if people just get near you, uh, they will start to steal your flag. So it's not just that people have to kill you. It's that if they just get near you for a while, uh, they'll get the flag. So that leads to a lot of fun moments in cars where I'm racing away with the flag and someone is coming up next to me. And even though... They can't kill me in the car. They can still take the flag. So I'm constantly trying to, you know, hack street lights and uh, road blockers to try to get them off my tail. But it's like that mode. You can play with teams or free for all, and it's just a lot of fun. It playing that with friends. Yeah, it's is, definitely made it makes it better to play with friends. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just kind of a ton of dumb fun because you're sitting here shooting at someone, and then all of a sudden a guy runs you over with a car and sends you flying in the air. <laughs> yeah. Those are the great moments. And what's particularly fun, stupid but great is on the team matches. Uh, so the way the physics work, if you jump on a car and the car starts driving, you're kind of glued to the roof. So you can just stand on the car as it goes like screeching around corners, as it goes flying off ramps, as long as it doesn't tip over you will stay glued to that top. So during some team matches, it's great. Like Chaos uh, will get, Chaos, uh, Creation Chaos will get into the car and he'll start driving because he has a flag. Me and another teammate will hop on top of the car and basically act as turrets, shooting at anyone that tries to come by, throwing <laughs> grenades at them. Yeah, they've got to change that. That's just way No, not... that's, been, that's one of the like <laughs> wonderfully dumb things that <laughs> multiplayer games do have stopped doing like i remember in the old battlefield 1942 Mm -hmm. (coughs) um if you got on the wing of a plane and crouched you could stay on that wing and people would use that to basically paratroop behind (laughs) enemy lines and like that's the kind of brilliant emergent multiplayer stuff that that you want to see in games okay I I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun to play it with people I knew. As far as the game, it's the multiplayer itself. I find it a, still a little clunky. In fact, I still find it a lot clunky. And in I think many, I played like one match without friends. Yeah, it's it's really what makes it fun is you guys really. And despite, and I almost want to say despite the game. Yeah, and and that's kind of just the benefit of playing with friends. Right. Always is that. You're able to do stupid stuff. Right. And when you're playing with strangers, it's kind of all serious. Right, exactly. And that's where the mechanics start to get a little unfortunate. That, you know, trying to use some of the special powers, like to do a jammer, 
you have to go into particular uh, menus that if you're flying away on a car and trying to drive a car, it's almost impossible, at least for me, to get that jammer. Chaos is really good at it. Chaos mm-hmm. can throw a jam any time. But if you're going to use something like that, it should be really assigned to the D-pad. Yeah, I'm surprised why it's not. Yeah, exactly. There's a number of, and then some of even just the running mechanics I found to be kind of clunky. Or even the, the melee mechanics is, you're really good at melee. You manage well, to melee a-, a lot. But the mechanics That's- of them are not easy at all. In in single player, it's easy because you just go up to a guy and press circle. Right. In multiplayer, it's harder because you have to be behind someone. Right. But uh, I don't want to like overemphasize my skill at meleeing people. My tactic is to just run up, mash a circle button while running in circles. <laughs> oh, is that how you do it? Is that your trick? That's what I do. Okay. <laughs> Um, And again, another kind of disappointing part of it is that the whole concept of Watch Dogs was about hacking. And you'd think that in a multiplayer thing, like if I could, I could get close to you via the camera. But the same thing where you're limited by the amount of space, which means that if I come close enough to you to hack a camera, then I'm also close enough to you for you to come to find me. But in order to get through the camera and start downloading the file from a distance, I'm assuming you can download the file from a distance. I have never been able to get close to somebody with a camera. No, I don't think you can through a camera. Oh, well then why, then again, what's the fucking point of calling it a hacking game? It's not, it's a shooter. I think the, like where that game kind of fits best with its hacking idea is in like the car chases because that's when you're constantly driving past like stoplights and blockers and you can constantly the blockers are great things yeah yeah and god damn chaos he's so (laughs) good at those he will he'll be in a car and he'll be racing around you know because he has essentially the flag and we're chasing him and he'll like stop and I can't see him, so I just see on the little mini map that his thing is stopped. And I'm thinking, all right, you know, maybe he crashed. I'm getting closer. In actuality, he's just sitting, waiting for me to get close so that he can pop a blocker as I'm like 30 feet from him. And then he just <laughs> takes off driving, cackling like a madman. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty fun. So yeah, I'm I'm still completely unsold on Watch Dogs the game, but as a sandbox for my friends and my friends alone, it's pretty fun. I had some I almost g- got it. I, good I laughing. I walked the other day and I went down to the bank and I walked by GameStop and I almost went in to see if they had it used, so if I hated it I could return it. And I just couldn't pull the trigger, even though it's it's probably only what five bucks off, so I would have been fifty five bucks on instead of sixty. I couldn't pull the trigger, and I got a couple uh, listeners of the show to tell me, "Oh, you got to go get it. You'll like it." I, I can't pull the trigger on this game. I just, I don't know what it is. I just, just can't pull the trigger and do it. Jager points out. He says the best part of Watch Dogs is the iPhone app. I have yet to try the iPhone app, and maybe I will, just simply because, you know, that I'm really looking for a lot of anything that will make me kind of like this game. So. It would be interesting just to see how it works. Yeah. Because I've done the mobile challenges through the console, mm-hmm. which is basically, again, the car chase. Well, But it's a car chase where you don't control the lights or the blockers, where the person on the mobile app does. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to get to from point A to point B while this other guy is blowing up the world around you. Mm-hmm. And those those can be pretty fun. Uh, but I've never tried to be on the other side of it. Yeah. So it sounds cool. And I, I, maybe I will like that instead. And it'd be very interesting if we could actually meet up in a game together. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you would obviously play and I could do the mobile app or vice versa. Speaking of Watch Dogs. Yes. I finished it last night. Oh. The story. Yeah. Uh, like, the way you take out the main bad guy mm-hmm. is pretty good. Like, it's that – it, it kind of justifies, like, the whole hacking idea. It's pretty 
very cold, uh, but um, very interesting, very fitting uh, mm -hmm. for the game. Mm -hmm. But like, okay, I really fucking hate the main character, Aiden Pierce, mm -hmm. and I hate him because he seems like you know he's such a generic kind of you know I'm a loner, I'm a badass, I gotta avenge my niece who died, you know all that stuff. But like when you actually kind of look at him. All of that is so unearned. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying before, he only has the the phone that can hack things because his hacker chick teammate gave it to him. Like he can't do anything on his own except beat people up. Mm -hmm. He's just like a dumb brute with a good team. But he's such an asshole to everyone that helps him. Like the first time he meets the hacker chick, he like goes up and grabs her neck and is like I'm you're gonna help me like he's threatening her right and then later on like uh after she sort of has second thoughts like okay you're in some deep shit I want to know I can trust you he just goes off on her like you, you trust me I don't have time to soothe you you're not my priority right now <laughs> even though he admits in that same sentence that he has nothing and he just lost everything he's like <laughs> That's kind of the time when you ask for help. Right. So he's just this old. Looking for the upper hand in a situation, and I thought, if if that was actually who he was, like if you were actually playing as this super villain master manipulator of people, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Because you'd be an asshole, but if he acted like a super villain, that would really fit the gameplay. Because the gameplay, you sometimes feel like a super villain, but like all throughout the actual game. The game tries to make him into this sympathetic, you know, loner hero. Like he's he's a tortured soul, and it just all comes off so false. And it just it makes me hate him so much. Just the fact that like he has all this arrogance. Like he thinks he's so good, but when you actually look at the people around him, there's nothing to him. Mm -hmm. like he's just completely helpless in this world. And I. He is probably the single, the, like, the video game character that I hate the most I've ever played in, like, since I can remember. I just can't stand him. And Ubisoft seems to kind of understand what's wrong with him because they try to, like, hand wave it, like, oh, yeah, he's a supervillain at the very end. But it's like, it's the very end. It's like, you... It clearly feels to me like this game was kind of rushed mm -hmm. because, like, they had a concept and then just threw a lot of money in it and built a game. Thinking through, what do you do with the gameplay? What do you do with the character? What do you do with the story? What do you do with this concept? They just they they rushed into it way too fast. Right. It it and I agree. It feels. And it's not just in the story, not just in the characters, not just in the 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 story based stuff, but also in the gameplay itself. It feels mm -hmm. a little kind of half baked, and it really makes me wonder what it was like before the. Probably one of the well, the sequel will be better because the people they kind of know what they're doing, or they have had time to think things through more. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So hopefully that's the case. That seems to be the uh, underlying thought is that this was the first venture into this and the sequel, now that they've learned what works and what doesn't work, is going to be really good. Yeah, that's, that's called a, a lot of games. Yeah, unfortunately, that's called a beta. And I really hate paying $65 for $30, $55, $60 for a beta. It's, it's, it's kind of, I'm going to be, a lo- it's going to have to be a hell of a Watch Dogs 2 for me to actually buy it because I'm so disappointed. Yeah, yeah. It's going to give me you know like make espresso and, and like wait wait for reviews instead of buying it on day one yeah no no that's not gonna even on day one I didn't buy it I just oh, kind oh. of had faith in it I stupidly had faith I mean I've even in, after the delay I was like you know I'm all right with them delaying it I feel good about the delay don't make any judgments I can remember saying that to goalie and he's like well I don't want it it's gonna well, be you delayed know what? I still I still think the delay is good. I think I mean, the delay was like good because it probably was pretty fucking unplayable. Yeah, it was probably pretty bad. And I, it, it all. This is what it feels like. It feels like it was the game that we thought it was going to be, and then it got played by somebody, you know, at the top, some decision maker, the studio, so to speak, the studio heads, and they were like, "Yeah, we don't like this. Actually, it's getting pretty bad reviews with our." Um, with our focus groups. So let's change the scope of the game and make it more of a shooter. And mm. then they had to rush that mechanic in there. Mm. That's kind of... Shoot- it's. I think the I, shooting was in there from the beginning. Oh, I'm sure the shooting was in there from the beginning, but it, they made it more of a shooter and less of a hacker. It has the feeling of, like, movies. Like, say, for example, one movie I'm real familiar with is um, M. Night Shyamalan's uh, Lady in the Water. Where they're like, oh, sounds great. Here's a bunch of money. Go make the, 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 the video game or go make the movie. And then they come back with this movie and then they show it to the studio heads. And the studio's head said, well, I thought this was going to be like The Sixth Sense. I thought it was going to be a scary movie. And he's like, no, this was, a, this was a fairy tale that I wrote for my kids. It's supposed to be a fairy tale. You knew that. I said that. And they're like, well, yeah, but we figured it would be more like your old movie. So go back, recut it and make it a horror movie. And that's what this feels like. Feels like they said, "Well, this is a hacker. This is a hacker." And he looked at it and said, "Yeah, I don't like this game. Go back and make it a shooter." Yeah, it does feel shoehorned. I, I, exactly. Together. I kind of agree. So I think that that's kind of what happened. Is somebody down the lines? This was this. This was not the game that was set to come out on launch day. This yeah, think, is some other do you game. Think that maybe just the um, I don't want to say the the, the hacking just got old or wasn't as fun with all the focus groups maybe that's what it's hmm, we got to do more than just the hacking i think so because there's not like when you look at all the things you can hack the reason i say the driving is the best is because there's like five different things you can hack in the world to stop cars from following you but outside of that like when you're on your feet there doesn't feel like there's a lot you can do and like i i really think that people got bored very quickly because there's just not a lot of variety in the hacking like that's what they need to spend a lot of time on is just thinking through this core mechanic and what can you do in the world with your smartphone right um thomas brown says uh in the chat room i can already see the division being a repeat of the watchdogs i don't think so no because at least at least division sells itself as a shooter (laughs) that's true it's not a bait and switch. And I felt feel very baited and switched on this one. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Anyways, well, speaking of having faith in games. Yes. I played another game that I had a lot of faith in. Yeah. And this time it paid off. It did. I finally started Transistor. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And... It's a, it's an interesting game. Oh, I hate things that start out interesting. It's no, very no. interesting. <laughs> but thing she, is, she's got a nice personality. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's it's so unlike Bastion. Like it's kind of the same, but it's also very very different. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. It's really cool, uh, and we played this at at PAX a couple of years ago. Right. Um, and I liked combat, it then. Yeah, the combat, how it's like this combination of real-time and turn-based 
is really really neat and um the the actions you can use uh they're called functions mm -hmm. and basically you can have four functions equipped at any time for one of the four face buttons mm -hmm. but of those four functions you can then kind of augment them with another function and those sub functions are not like explicitly sub functions so so you get like you just start collecting functions throughout the game mm -hmm. and i think there's like 16 in total and you can combine them in all these different sorts of way so like one attack that you know is just kind of a, a long straight shot you can augment it so that uh it converts people to your side when it hits them or you can augment it so that it splits off into three shots and then converts people when you hit them Ooh, cool. and like just the the sheer number of combinations of uh these functions is incredible and it constantly makes you want to play around with this mechanic and just see what's possible with the game and it's so much fun to just experiment and discover new combinations that you suddenly think okay this is how I'm going to beat the game. And what's interesting about the story is that these functions are people. Well, it's almost like they are, I don't know, like the spirits of people or something like that. Like a lot of times you come across a dead body and you go up to it and hit X and you'll take the function and your talking sword will kind of talk to this other function almost as if it were alive, but you can't hear it. Uh, so the world itself is is very interesting. Uh, you don't know a lot about it going in. You just kind of start. But as you use the function more and more, that bio will grow and you'll kind of learn more and more about the person that it represents and that will teach you more and more about the world so you learn different things depending on whether the function is equipped in like a main slot or a sub slot so you that again constantly encourages you to switch things out and mess with the uh the combinations and i mean that's the core of the gameplay is switching out these functions for the combat It's all very, almost like uh, uh, based on you know the layout of a PC, um, and then there's this conspiracy involved that you're kind of trying to expose and get revenge on. But it's just, it's such an interesting game. Like as I'm playing it, I'm just like, I want to see more. I want to see what the next thing is. I want to see the next area. I want to hear the next song. I want to learn more about this person about this world i want to try the next function like everything about it just makes me want to play it more hey nick mm. um Did i drop yeah no we're getting really really bad numbers i mean like everything's i'm watching our my connection going up and down terribly so what i'm going to do is this this is episode 268 we're going to stop the recording and I'm going to restart the router. Hopefully that will fix it. We've been having some terrible trouble with, with Comcast lately. So I'm going to restart the, uh, stop the show, restart the router. We'll come back in about five minutes. So if you're in the chat room, please return to us in about five minutes. But I'm seeing the numbers go up really bad. And I'm seeing in the chat, people are like, okay, you've totally cut out now. And they said they're only getting about 50% of what you're saying. So you could totally interrupt me. I don't mind being interrupted if things are going bad. No, it's all right. I'm just was just kind of watching it just now. And of course, as soon as I start talking, everything's fabulous. Huh. Anyway, well, I'm okay. going to restart the router. If you guys want to, and, and no, that would not be you. It's not you specifically. It can't be you. So, oh, and there go the numbers. They're starting to go up again. All right. So let me uh, sh shut down the show. 
And we'll be back in five minutes with episode 268.1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll be back. Stay tuned.